he spent a lot of time working with how things were done in, in the old days. Yeah. You know, like, and you, you know, you got you got a certain amount of indies of a certain size, and you got major labels. And usually, the you know the, the normal path was you got to deal with a little indie, and hopefully, you know, you got a bit of press, you got a bit of enemy, you got a bit of radio from perhaps Le Mac or Peel or something like that, and then hopefully you got picked up by a major. Yeah. And you built your career that way. And hope you know uh, your main routes to your audience were via things like uh, a bit of radio and a bit of press, whether that be Kerrang or Enemy, depending on what kind of band or does any of that model still exist? Yeah, still works. Radio is still key, I think, just for opening up the doors. You know what I mean? There's there's sort of music fans out there that will always read those certain magazines and always get their fix that way. Radio is still a key way to you know suddenly. 50,000 people that maybe haven't, would never hear about a band to still hear it. The difference about it is you haven't got that paid for anymore. Normally a label would cover that. If you're doing a record yourself, suddenly that person that gets a grand a month or two grand a month or three grand a month, you know, it's kind of not, it's not really on the menu as such. Is that like a plugger? Yes, yeah, so you get a radio plugger. Well, it's, even that's changing a little bit because people have got less money. Yeah, in the, in the good old days, you'd have a dedicated radio plugger. So that person takes your tune, you know, album or single, six weeks before it comes out. So they'd go around, you know, and it is hard. It's called plugging because it really is. It's a hard sell. Um, you know, listen to this, please listen to that. Come and see this gig. You know, does your son want to come see this gig? Does your birds want to come and see this gig? It, it's proper. Can I get you the cab? Can I take you out for dinner first? Please just come and see this. You know, and then it goes to a playlist meeting, and then it goes to eventually to the producers. So yeah, that's why it takes so long. It could be eight weeks before a single comes out. People have been hammering it to death, just trying to get it stuck somewhere. Like you said, with the Mac, he was great, because he would listen to everything and be constantly feeding new music. If it's on a major, you might be struggling. You know, you might be up against another 100 bands the same week to get six slots on the radio. So that's like the traditional way of doing it and it's still relevant is it as relevant as it was probably not as much because you've got all those other channels you've got the you know you can post a video on facebook or you, you, you sort of youtube video that's why you see these kind of crazy stats of bands you know getting a million plays of a video before it's out it's just very hard to measure measure that you know you don't know if that million plays is a bunch of people that were guided to it because it was posted on a great website you know go and check this out or if a million people sat there and watched the whole video. From your position, do you see that actually translate into meaningful sales or growth of audience for the band? Or Growth of audience, yeah. You can definitely, you know, when a song's with a video, you can definitely go to a gig and suddenly everyone knows the words to that song, you know. Or in the Black Spiders camp, they've got a song called Kiss Tried to Kill Me. Which, you know, has sort of been leaked on our Facebook pages and you do get to gigs now where there'll be kids, you know, when that song comes in they'll rip off their Black Spider shirt, so show their Kiss t-shirt underneath, which is awesome. Those things are absolutely brilliant when you see them because it has happened totally organically, but measuring it's hard and then selling that thing's hard because if that person could go on YouTube and watch the video and list the song, it's not really any reason to buy it. Because the game is changing then all the time, do you have to constantly come up with new ideas? Are you kind of like, are you, are you, have you got to be an ideas guy? Because obviously there was a formula that you followed before, and you did X, Y, and Z, and hopefully some some of those things stuck. You know, yeah, something just has to stick. It doesn't matter if you're the Rolling Stones or you're some band you've never heard of. It's one thing. Is it that chorus? Is it that video? Is it the T-shirt? So yeah, I think you've got to be clever. I don't think you have to stray too far from the path because all you're really trying to do is get people to hear that song or see that band, you know, or see that T-shirt. It's very, it's very hard to try and go completely off. People do it all the time, like the Kaiser Chiefs on paper sounded brilliant and it was sort of a follow on from Radiohead's give it away at whatever cost. With falling sales and physical product going down the pan, do you think that's made it worse in some respects? Because those guys are in a position where they can afford to do that, but they've now set the bar. And it's like, you know, a, a generation of kids are basically getting into bands that, that give their music away. I don't think any of those ideas worked so well that it changed the landscape, if you see what I mean. The Radiohead sort of works brilliant, yeah, for a band, like you said, that could afford it. I don't think anyone's ever broken their career by doing it. 
you know what I mean? By doing a newish way, apart from the just give it away, which people don't really give away whole albums. There, it's very much here's a track or here's a free download or here's an exclusive. Don't think anybody yet has just gone here's a free album and built a career off it because it still needs to be promoted. Yeah. It's this weird chicken and egg, like it always was, but now the chicken hasn't got any money. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> to lay its egg. If you listen to an artist like Aretha Franklin, Shaka Khan, Patti LaBelle, Gladys Knight, they're all great singers and they don't sound anything like each other. They have distinct styles. You hear a couple notes on the radio. I know.